let me start by making a distinction between focusing and teaching focusing, between focusing and instructions. Because I find that in every kind of helping, different modes of therapy, different approaches to body, or every different kind of thing that has ever helped anybody, if the person being helped focuses, then the helper person is glad. They may not recognize it because they never heard of focusing, but they're glad. It's easier to work with a person who has that kind of internal connecting. Nobody's against focusing, is the, my point. A lot of people, however, have trouble with the fact that a therapist or a helping person would stop the helping process and teach, teach focusing, give instructions, tell people what to do. And there's a difference there. The focusing belongs to the person. Focusing is done by the person, by the client, by whoever you're helping. Instructions are something else. They're done by the helping person, right? By the therapist, by whoever it is who's trying to help. So the focusing instructing, and here comes a contradictory thing, the focusing instructing needs to be very specific to help people find it. So we have these little steps. And do it for a minute exactly the way I tell you. You don't want to do what I tell you? Well, that's fine. Don't do what I tell you. But if you want to find this, try exactly this and this and this. Exactly so and so and so. Oh, there. Now you didn't find it? Well, why not? And then you hear from the person, and then you know, of course, that you have to fiddle with the stuff for each individual person. Uh, so focusing teaching needs to be very specific. On the other hand, when you become very specific, then you have it a particular way. So then I would like you to be very specific when you teach, and at the same time I need you to be pleased that other people are being very specific in a very different way. They're not using your specifics. So here's the six steps, well, that's too general. But anyway, there's somebody has seven steps. I want that. I don't want you to think that there is one way to teach it. Each individual needs particular fiddling to find it, but the closer we can come, the more specific we can be, the better. So I would like you to, if you're teaching, focusing in, in the future, if you're new today, that's okay. Uh, I'd like you to teach it right away, teach your husband, teach your kids, teach your neighbor, teach anybody who will sit still for it, and at the same time, I would like you to want to look at Ann Weiser's very specific way of doing it, or Nada's very specific way of doing it, or anything like that. So that sounds contradictory. I'd like you to see the variety of how to teach, and then do it any way you want. Is that clear? Nobody can tell you how to do it. But if you watch them, or if you read their stuff, you may find something you want to use there. That's the teaching. If you don't think, if you're a therapist and you don't think that focusing instructions should be given as part of the therapy because it interrupts the process, well then have one of your colleagues teach the patients focusing. We have good research from 25 years ago already showing that if therapists send their difficult clients whom they have trouble with who are stuck to a focusing teacher, when they come back from the focusing teaching, about half of them do th the therapy much better, and the therapist is very impressed. The other half don't do any better, but then if you look at the research, you see the ones who do better are the ones who really learn the focusing. I will say, when you just said that, what comes to you here? And I put my hand on my in the middle here, between my chest and my belly somewhere. I say, what, what do you have, what comes in here when you say that? And with very many, about half the people, right away something deeper comes. Immediately. So I recommend that to all helping people, whether they know about focusing or not. Even if nothing comes for you, you can say that to somebody. What comes to you, for you here when you said that? Right away it deepens the whole thing. The other half say, what did you say? 
So then you say, never mind, that's all right. You were just saying, and you can go on smoothly like that. Uh, little tiny things don't get in the way so much. Or you can say back to somebody, instead of, they say, I'm scared of such and such, instead of saying back, you're scared of such and such, you can say, there's something in there that's scared, or there's some fear in there, or there is a thing in there that's scared, or, and you're pointing to where a felt sense would come. So anyway, the distinction I'm setting up is between focusing, which belongs to the person, comes from inside, and teaching focusing, which is the other person is doing.